All right, ladies and germs, we are back on the farm. I've got my 7210. And unfortunately, I've blocked myself off. So if you remember right, we bought some of this stuff for our farm. We need to uh, get this loaded onto the cart. I'm going to – I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. I would like to get the tractor hooked to the cart. It's kind of a hard to get these things on there. Now, I've learned with this game um, – Getting these things lined up is kind of a pain. I usually take the forks and poke it until it's straight, and then I go for the, the scoop. And you try to keep them nice and even. Otherwise, they'll get stuck on the forks. It's a pretty demanding process. that you, It requires that you pay close attention to what you're doing. Um, we should be able to get all four of these on here nicely. Put that there. And then we're going to go ahead and, yeah, see what I'm saying? Now, uh, one of the things you can do is you can, if the forks lean down a little bit like that, sometimes it comes up, but I think we got stuck. Uh, let's see here. Come on. Uh, once again, I must not have gotten it. you got to get it just right. There we go. Okay. Yeah, they're a little weird. I don't, I'm still not quite sure. I feel like the forks physics were slightly better in 17. That's one thing they've never really gotten perfect. But I've played a lot of games that have, like, forks, like farm site type games. And farm sim still, even though it's clunky, it's still the best at that type of, you know, control. So what are you going to do? We work with what we have, right? And I'm going to thump this back a little bit there. They're going to hang off a little bit, but that's okay. And I just got to get this one off. There we go. Once again, if you aim the forks so that the front of the forks are down, usually that helps things slide off. I'm going to kind of just... There we go. Let's take a look here and see. Yep, good enough for government work. So we're going to come over here, and when I get close, I press... I don't know what the key... Let's see, is it... Yeah, it's, it's the left joystick... And Neil had mentioned that I should probably keep this open so we can see what our things are. So there you go. I'll have the help menu open so you can see it. But I'm fastening that belt. That will keep those fastened on there so they don't slip off because I don't want those falling off. There we go. Oops. Didn't get the forks down low enough. So far, so good. So just two more packages and we'll be fully loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and load these up, and I'll catch you when I'm done. All right, so those other two are loaded on. Saved you a little time there. And we're going to do this. I'm going to drive these home. So uh, let's go ahead and grab this. We're going to leave the fertilizer here for now, the sprayer, I mean. And I'm going to take this guy home. A couple corrections. Somebody did point out that I did get the dollar amounts wrong. When you do start from scratch... You start with a million dollars, and you have a $250,000 loan, so 1.25. I had originally said you started with 500, and you got an additional 500 for 1.0 mil. Uh, once again, the loans aren't horrible, but I try to avoid them if I can. It's not the end of the world if you have to take out one. Just be aware that you will pay interest every day, but when you make your daily payment, unless you actually go in and make a $5,000 payment, there's no payment made. You're just paying interest. So you could sit on a loan potentially forever and just pay interest on it. Now, interest payments aren't too bad depending on how big the loan is, but on a $500,000 loan, I believe there's, like, I want to say it's around, like, $500 a day or something like that in interest. It might be a little bit more, but you are, so you're better off paying it off. But it doesn't, when you pay that daily interest, you're not paying any of the loan down. So... You do want to start paying it down also along with the daily interest. Um, I don't believe we have a loan out right now, and I don't, you know, we may take one out later to kind of just show you how that works, but I don't feel like I need a loan right now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the big tractor back. We've got this here now, and we have our product, and we're going to fill up the tractor. So we're going to hop into this guy. 
And we're going to grab that cedar. Now, my only complaint with this cedar is that it's a little awkward because it's wide and it does not fold. So you got to be careful with traffic and stuff because it does stick out into the other lanes. So just be aware. So I'm going to run this home. I'll see you in just a minute. All right, so I'm rolling home to our state. And you'll notice here on the cedar, when I get close to these boxes, and that's going to be uh, these guys. This is the seed right here. This is the solid fertilizer that goes in the cedar. As you can see, these other containers are liquid containers. This contains fertilizer and liquid for uh, your herbicide to kill any weeds and stuff like that. These are used in the sprayer. So the liquid stuff goes in the sprayer. The solid stuff goes in the cedar. You'll notice here when I pull close to the tractor, do you see how those automatically opened up? That means, hey, you're close to seed. Now the seed goes in the front on this one. And apparently the fertilizer goes in the back. If you get close to the fertilizer again, I'll try to turn it that way. You should see the other ones open. They open automatically when they're near a device that has what you need in it. So there's that. And they should close automatically as you pull away. There you go. And then as I get close to the seeds, it's going to pop those open and I can fill up. I know it's unrealistic, but that's how it goes. You can also use a shovel from a tractor to shovel them in, or you can use forklifts. I mean, however you want to do it. You can detach this tractor, say you put this seed on the forklift here, and then carry it up and raise it up above this so that it dumps into there. That would be more realistic uh, than what we just did, but it also takes longer, obviously. So let's decide what we want to plant. I think we're going to plant um, oats, because I'd like to do horses. So on this field, we're going to do oats. And then on our other field, I think just for a cash crop, we're going to do some soybean. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to we're going to reverse that. I'm going to do soybean on this field because it's huge. And we'll do, um, we'll do um, oats on the other field. So let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and, and click my left button. And we're going to actually, where is it? Uh, how do I, oh my gosh, my brain, hold on, it did something weird, I got to figure it out now though, okay, so when I hold my left button down there, you can see I can select seed uh, using the left bumper and Y, so here is our soybeans, we've got soybeans selected, and you can see down in the bottom right, as I press the left bumper and the Y button, you can see bottom right, you can see the field, the seed type changing. So we're going to pick soybean. But that tells you, too, what this plants. This planter plants soybean. Oil seed radish, grass, wheat, barley, oat, and canola. Some seeders plant different stuff. Most of them plant the same things. Um, and then, once again, you have planters. And the planters do corn, sunflowers. Uh, I believe they do, um, what's the other one? Um, not sugar cane, but I think they can. No, those sugar cane planters. Um, sunflowers, corn, beets, sugar beets. That's what I'm trying to think of. Uh, and then they also do grass. Both both types do grass, but the planters can plant those types of crops. So seeders plant these types. Planters do others. They also call this a seed drill. Um, and the planter will make road crops too. So they're like you know the corn obviously grows in rows, whereas cedars they they put them a little bit tighter together so here you can see the pattern is changing on the field showing us that we have now seeded along the field and we are putting fertilizer down at the same time and you'll notice in our bins on the bottom right hand corner the numbers are slowly going down as we use up the seed that's in the the um, container or in the cedar and the fertilizer and we're gonna probably have to fill this up a couple times i think I may even have to go back to the shop and get more, but let's hope not. Let's do another pass. You can see it. So once again, I'm going to back up. Left bumper. We're going to lower the cedar and go. And you do have to turn the cedars on and off. If they're off, they will not work. <laughs> so left bumper uh, X turns it on and off. You can see there it says left bumper X. 
So I could just turn that sower off right now and it would stop seeding. But we want to seed, so. You can also overseed by going over the rows that you've already been over. It doesn't really do anything in the game. And it will decrease the amount of seed coming out. So if you mistakenly run over stuff that you've already seeded, no big deal. The seeder will shut off. That is um, seems unrealistic, but actually... Um, Stara and several other companies make these new uh, high-precision sewing instruments. And they actually go, um, the GPS remembers in real life, this is all real life stuff, it remembers where you've been and where you've seeded, how wide your seeder is, and it will actually shut off nozzles. So those little seeding, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it aside from those wheels that are at the back there, each nozzle has a set of wheels. We'll take a closer look here. See those nozzles there? They're they're in between, and each of these each of these pair of wheels has a seeder device in front of it, and it puts down seeds, and um, it, each one of those hoses represents one of those seeders. They can turn on and off. So as you pass over places that you've already seeded, like let's say you, you get the seeder halfway over, uh, it will set the shut that like like let's say I do this, and I'm seeding, and I come over here and I. I cover half of what I've already done, like that. It actually shuts off the right side of the seeder. And you'll notice here, my seed count's going down very slowly because it's got half the seeder shut off. Uh, and that is a real world thing, believe it or not. Stara, I know for a fact, does it. I'm not sure all the manufacturers do, but probably most of them at this point do it. Uh, they track where you've been and they make sure that you're um, not overseeding and, and you can choose to force it to do it. But it saves you on seed. That way you're not, like, double seeding the same place twice. So, you know, it's neat. As you, you know, in real life, and we have a DLC or mod called Precision Farming in this game. Uh, that makes it a little bit more realistic. But in real life, I mean, farmers really rely on the data from their fields. They go out and see, where, you know, different parts of the fields have different soil ta types. And they're very into knowing what their field has and what it needs in order to get the best yield. Some places on the field need more seed than others. You know, so it's just, it's kind of a neat thing. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, get this planted. I will see you when I'm done. I may hire a worker so I can go do other things while they're working the field. Uh, and if they if I do that, I'll come back. But I think, uh, you know, we're just going to try to get this done. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will see you when we're done. All right, so I've hired a worker. Hopefully they will not get lost, but we'll see. Once again, remember the harvester guy got lost. That, that could happen uh, for him, too. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and pull our product trailer into the garage here and park it. Back this thing in. There we go. And, I mean, we still need to bring the cedar home. I think I'm going to wait, or the sprayer. I think I'm going to wait, though. I'll wait for the sprayer to come home till later. Uh, we're going to park this over here. I'm going to try to squeeze both tractors into one bay. And then we'll try to get the cedar and sprayer into one bay. But uh, right now this guy is working. In the meantime, let's look around our property. Uh, once again, we have some other land that we have. Oh, come on. <laughs> These are the workers. They're terrible. Yeah, yeah. He can't He can't handle the trailer being parked here. He's oh, my God. We're blocked. There's no way around it. All right. So we'll move this tipper off <laughs> temporarily. So I kind of want to look at the property and see what we can do to make more money. First things first, uh, we do own, I think, some of that up there. Somebody else had mentioned, and I, I don't want to do this for the sake of the look of the farm, uh, but they did point out, and maybe a good tip for those of you that don't care, um, you could theoretically sell all these buildings and make a decent profit, actually. Uh, these buildings don't do anything, uh, and lots of maps give you buildings that don't do anything. Some of them do have buildings that actually do stuff, but these buildings are for looks. Like, this is a chicken coop. I wish we could, or some kind of animal housing. 
I wish we could use this, but it doesn't let you do anything with it, and that's a waste. You know, it's like, why? Look at all these buildings. There are a lot of, like, nothing built. Yeah, maybe I could maybe I could agree with that with that a little bit. This had this once again. This looks like it could do something, but it does nothing. Uh, the only thing that these have done is they've made nice flat spots on the ground where we could place animal pens. So, and eh, you know, maybe they're right. Because once again, this is just for looks. So let's take a look and see what we can do. Um, now you can't sell buildings at the dealership, so you have to get half price for them. That's just how it works. Farm stable. Look at this. There's a stable here, but we can't use it. <laughs> Farm storage. That does nothing. There's nothing. It does nothing. It's decorative. $30,000. So we I <laughs> don't want to sell the house, obviously. Don't want to sell. I think we can sell the garage. We have, let's see, 10, 10. That's 20. Plus 50. <laughs> I guess we could do that. So, guys, I hate to do this. Once again, I'm... I, I like the look of the farm, and I think, unfortunately, this kind of ruins it, but um, uh, it's, um, anyway, I, I I don't know. What do you think? I think I'm going to go ahead and sell them. Hold on a sec. All right. I think we're going to do it. I mean, even if we sell it and buy some useful buildings, I don't. Though, honestly, there really aren't a lot to pick from in, in the stock game. Um, but this free money, it get, we could buy all kinds of stuff. This would help us get animals going. So, once again, you got to be kind of a money grubber as a farmer. If you can sell it and make money from it and you're not using it, then do it. So now we have a sparse, lonely, empty farm. Uh, I'm looking around here. So, but that gives us some nice flat pieces of land for animal stalls. Um, we probably need a real barn at some point, though, to kind of, like, store stuff. But that makes me sad. But at the same time, I mean, it's, they're just junk. So um, let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, things that we could actually use now. We don't need water. Yeah, wow, there's really nothing. Look at that. A tractor washer. <laughs> That's my favorite thing ever. We can now wash our tractors as they get dirty. So that's an A-plus right there. Now, unfortunately, we can maintain and change tires on our tractors with this. Uh, and we can also fix our tractors up and all that good stuff. So uh, I think we're going to put this down also. And I'm trying to get it close to where the tractors are parked. Okay, where is it going to let us do this? Nope. Yeah, right there, because that makes sense. I think what we're going to do is we're going to turn this around this way, and I'll put it here in the trees. Mm. Would that work? We'll go back a little bit. No, something is in the way, as usual. How about over here? Really? Anywhere that I want to put it, I can't put it. You could stick it out in the middle of the road. That would work. There we go. That's a little bit more recessed. Okay. So we've placed this. So now you can kind of see how the placements go. Uh, all right, so we have that. So our farm's a little bit more functional. Still not great, but... Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is let's take a look real quick and see. Now that we got some money, we can look at uh, sheds. You have three sheds to pick from in the base game. There's way more when you start getting into mods and stuff, but these are what we have. Don't need anything yet. Uh, but we do have animal pens. And, um, yeah, we got, let's see, pigs, sheep. H horses. Horses are, um, I think the easiest animal you can start with are sheep, but they don't make much money. Cows and sheep, unless you have 100-plus animals, they really don't make much money. And cows require a lot of feed. Um, horses require that you ride them every day. They also need oats, and they need hay and straw and water. Um, sheep just need grass and water. But they once again, you need a lot of sheep to make money. Um, 
But it can't hurt to show you guys how animals work. So maybe I think to start with, maybe we'll do – I don't – did I keep oats? Let's take a look real quick here. I think I kept my oats, didn't I? Yes, I did. So we can, we can have that. Um, but there are some things that we're going to have to buy. So let's hold off a little bit on that until uh, we get the next crop in because we're going to have to buy a, wa a water trailer. We're going to need to buy uh, a horse transport trailer because you'll save a lot of money that way. Um, and we're going to need to buy um, – this should be it. Um, so, once again, we're going to look around the farm a little bit while that guy's working. He's still going, so we're going to let him do his – oh, he's lost. He's not working. Let's see what he got done. Did he finish the whole job? Oh, look, he did. Hey, not bad. So now we just need to get him working the other way because we have an awkward field here that goes this way. So I'm going to put this guy here. Uh, I don't want to answer it. My friend's got me. As you guys know, if you've been around the channel, I am a wedding videographer. And I don't want to take a wedding this weekend. The guy, the guy that I work with is calling like, hey, I got a wedding this weekend. You want to do it? I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, it's like when you finally have a weekend off, it's like, man, it's so nice. Okay, so there's. it looks like there's a road that surrounds our property. So we'll be able to tell the property line pretty easily now it would be great to have some field space uh here's the ditch so that's our property line right here so we own all these trees that's a good thing because we can make some money on that and we could also turn this into a grass field because there's already grass growing here so we can just you know we could all plow this under though and make it into like a real actual operating grass field and the same thing for the map on the other side. Um, let's take a look real quick again at the map. So we own a lot of stuff. We own all this over here, but this looks like it's kind of a waste because it's hilly. Let's take a look. Surveying is the key to what you decide to do. Uh, we definitely need to rent some logging equipment. I wouldn't buy logging equipment necessarily. Uh, but we're going to make it we're simple. Now, a chainsaw, sure, because it's a 1000 bucks. I mean, so we own all this, too, but there's really nothing usable here. Now, we could use the terrain deformation tool and flatten this out, but that's going to cost a lot of money to do that. But it may be worth it in the long run. Uh, and then also, let's see, we have, let's take a look at the map one more time. Come on. What are you doing? Oh, fooey. And so once again, on this side, we own all of this up to the rock wall, basically. Uh, ruff, ruff, ruff. Uh, do we own this where I'm at? No. And so the road, this whatever, it's not really a road, but this dirt track is our property line once again. So we own these trees. Uh, once again, you could, I think we probably are going to, on, on my farm at least, cut this down. So we have lots of grass once these trees are out of here and out of the way. Um, we'll have some of these are gonna be a pain because they're weird shaped, but uh, pine trees make the best cuttable downable trees. <laughs> um, but once we clear some of that out, we got a nice grass field here, um, and we'll be able to get hay and um, hay off of it for our horses, and eventually even for our cows and stuff, we'll be able to provide. So I think that's a go, actually. Um, yeah. So why don't we go ahead and I'm gonna take my little tractor and we're gonna I'll show you what we can do with that shop, why we bought that. I keep wanting to do the snow runner gear switch. I, I'm holding my left bumper, trying to shift gears. It doesn't work. But I wanna do it. Oop, nope. So we're gonna we're gonna select the front forks. There we go, and I drop those forks off. Um, now we're going to go ahead and change over to the air tractor. Sorry. Um, so what are we going to get? I think we need to run to the shop. I'm going to get a chainsaw. 
And we're going to start clearing those trees off the property. We'll get a tip or two to throw the logs into. All right, so I'll be back. I will return in just a moment, folks. All right. So we've arrived at Carlos Reliable Motors. I'm going to grab this. And we're going to go in here and look at lumber tools. So the first thing we need is definitely going to be a chainsaw so we can cut this stuff down. Now, they have different, let's see, I don't think we have, well, let's see what they got. Uh, first things first. I want to see if we have any attachments that can do it. Forestry equipment. Huh? Hmm. That would make things a little bit easier. So we can cut the trees down with this, and I don't have to use a chainsaw. Let's, that looks really easy. But we still need a chainsaw to cut stuff up. So even with that, it's cool, though. But um, we can drag logs with this. Uh, I just usually cut them up and put them in by hand. But uh, we're not going to be doing any shredding. <laughs> and we need a truck. <laughs> this thing... I hate that thing. I never use the step of portion. So let me see what we can jerry rig here because I don't like the way that we can use those, but they're a pain. I, I prefer to use just regular old tippers. Um, and cut them up, throw them in there, and dump it. Um, I mean, our typical what we have at home, we could just use the one we have at home, honestly. So why don't we do that? I know you're like, what, Arthur, but we want to see. Nope, too bad. I'll show you when we get home. Uh, we're going to make it have sides, and we'll just toss logs in there. We'll, make, we'll have to do a couple trips, but it'll be easier in the long run. Uh, all right. But I need to have a forced grapple is really what I need. And I don't – and we're going to need a stump grinder. We don't need that. Unless – you know, I'm going to try this. We can cut it down with this, and then we'll still need a chainsaw, but um, – Let's go ahead and pick that, and we're going to lease it. It's only 200 bucks to lease. It's cheap to operate. Uh, chainsaw, we're going to just buy at a Husqvarna. And that should be all we need to do basic lumber. Now, they get, get as crazy as you want with lumber. I mean, you can go from, you know, like a full setup to, uh-oh, this doesn't work. I didn't read it properly. Oh, no, there it is. I was going to say, I didn't read it properly. Oh, it attaches to that. Weird. Okay, well, that works. <laughs> Boing. I thought it was a front loader attachment, but I was wrong. That actually makes it a little easier, too. You don't, think. You don't even need a front loader attachment. All right, I'll be back. We've arrived back home. It looks like our helper got lost, as usual. So I'm going to pick the uh, cutter here. We're going to just drop this. Wait, let's see. It's that one. Yep, drop it there. I'm going to take the arms off this tractor because we don't need it. Uh, we do need it. Hold on. Okay, I'm seeing a bit of a problem with my plan. I forgot that we have all these packages on our uh, the back of our trailer, but we have something else we have to deal with first. So a little farm management. I'm going to pull out. We'll do this in a second, but I need to get that other tractor working. All right, so we're going to take this one off by right-clicking or left-clicking the left joystick. Running over here. This is called multitasking. This is why it is okay to have two tractors because you're going to often run into situations where you can run one tractor doing one thing and have another tractor doing something else. Uh, and uh, no, he did do it. Okay, it looked from a distance like he hadn't gotten the section, but he did. So we're good. He has completed the task on this field. Now we're going to switch over to uh, oats. There should be enough oats to plant that other field, but if not, it'll let us know. So we're going to just drive right over our nice field. Don't do that once the crops start growing. If you run over a field while the crops are growing, you will kill the crop. So don't do it. Don't do as I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Do as I do. I don't know. Do something. But just don't do what I do. How come I couldn't sell the outhouse? All right, so we're going to get on track here and get this thing set up to plant oats. And go for it. Nope. Hired a worker by pressing B, and off they go. Zuweka is working. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and pop those off. And you'll see me do this a lot in my series. I still, you know, like, I never use the replenishment container on Alpine Farm. Uh, at some point, probably in the next episode, I'll show you how to do the mods. Because that's where the game really starts to open up. Uh, but I don't want to get too far. There's so many things you can do mod-wise. But we'll do some simple mods that I recommend. Uh, follow Me is one of them where you can have two tractors work together. And they follow each other. That helps a lot, getting stuff done. Uh, another big one is uh, the replenishment container where you can get seed and fertilizer, everything you need without having to go to the shop and get these packets. I don't know. In this day and age, I think people mostly get stuff delivered to them. I don't. It's pretty rare that I think people would go, actually go out and, you know, load up a truck for their farm. They just go to the store and have it delivered. Um, so I don't know. And so that having the replenishment container kind of, Shows that a little bit more accurately. Maybe really big farms have a truck where they go to the to get their ah, seed supplies. But I know, like, watching Millennial Farmer and stuff, they just have stuff delivered. So I'm going to do this. This is getting sloppy. I'm not paying attention. I'll be back. Now, one of my viewers was saying there are plenty of harvesters in the $100,000 range. I disagree. Uh, now, if you're talking with mods, well, yes, there are lots and lots of harvesters available. Uh, and all kinds of different brands and stuff. But if we're doing a non-modded game where we're not using any mods at all, no, the range of harvesters is actually very limited. Uh, you basically have the the Neva, or is it Neva or Nova? It's the Neva. Uh, or Nova, the Nova. I don't Hang on, we'll look. This is what I was talking about. You go from the Bison, which is, I mean, these are both okay. But first of all, there's really no American options in here aside from the Activa, which is way up in the $200,000 range. So uh, good harvester, though. Activa is a great harvester, good price. Uh, but there's no, like, midsize or smallish midsize New Hollands or case um, harvesters <laughs> that we see a ton of in Ohio. That's what I was saying. I'm not saying that there aren't harvesters. Sure, like the Nevas or the Nova is great. The Nevas is the smaller one. Um, the Nova is excellent, but without mods, we only have these three that are in the small harvester category and they're small, small. There's nothing that's like, that can run like a, like a 10 foot header. These all run like three foot headers, right? Or 10. No, maybe they're, hang on. What size headers? They're in meters. So I get confused. Hang on. I'm not good at, I always have to remember three for one. Um, let's look at the headers that they come with. So four meters would be 12 feet. Um, so we're looking, I'm thinking like a 20-foot header. Like basically this one, well, no, that's more. See, that's what I'm saying. It goes, it jumps right from, well, I guess that's, what is that, 15 foot? So a 15-foot header to 3 times 70, 7.6 is going to be 24. Like an almost 30-foot header. We jump from 15 to 30, but maybe that's, I don't know. There seems like there's a lot of harvesters. Maybe 20 foot's what I'm looking for. Um, you know, but I feel like that we're limited there. It doesn't mean that there's not available, but we don't have, once again, any American brands there. Uh, now, in the new version of the game, I think they're coming out. And if you add mods, there's definitely stuff there. Um, but if you're not adding mods and you're just playing the base game, there's only a couple selections of at any range, honestly. And the mid sizes are really hurting. They basically go from like, they got the you have the um, Massey Ferguson, and you have the John Deere, and that's it. Like then you're just going up to like the three hundred thousand plus range, which is the really big harvesters. So I feel like the game's a little bit lacking there. But I think when we get to twenty two, from what I've seen so far, we're gonna have a lot more choices. So we'll see. And it's not a bad thing. Like I said, you can mod all that stuff in. There's a huge library of harvesters and tractors and equipment available from mods. They're not all good, but a lot of them are great. So, in fact, for me, Farm Sim 19 has kind of surprised me. Uh, in Farm Sim 17 and 15, I almost never used mods because I was always disappointed at how they looked, how they performed. They always seemed like they were subpar. But with Farm Sim uh, 19, the mods have actually been great. Like, a lot of them have been really, really good. So, all right, so the first thing first is we're going to cut these trees down 
and then we'll strip them. Oh, the tank is empty. Okay, so that's something we got to deal with. That's what I was talking about. See, it says helper G up in the upper uh, right-hand corner. He stopped work unexpectedly because his tank is empty. So he's run out of something, either fertilizer or seed. But because we don't have the automatic continue on, that's what he does. And that's what you want. If you had the automatic refill on, you'd be being charged now three times, at least double, I think, actually. Double what it costs you to just run the machine with if you fill it yourself. So always worth it to fill yourself, and that's what we're doing. Is that confusing? Hopefully this is helping you guys and not making you more confused. <laughs> In other words, always you guys remember what I'm talking about, where, it, where I turned off all those options. I can't get in. I've organized my farm to death. So now that I've taken that off, I need to put it back on. Well, we'll show you another way to load this. We can take these seeds and come over here. Bring it on up. And load it over the top, just like you would in real life. That's no way that it filled up. There we go. It probably will take the rest of our seed. Nope, it left 10. Oh, screwed. All right, well, I'll show you how to take care of that later. You can use these seed packets, like, to help each other out. So drop that there. Good. And I'm going to get this guy back out in the field as quick as possible. Quiet. And we're going to go ahead and get that guy started back up again. All right. Start this up. And we're just going to set this down here. Disconnect that. And I'm going to show you what I was talking about with this tipper. Uh, we can take this over to the shop and make a wagon out of it. Nope. I might have to take the weight off the back, which it, it's fine. I thought with these would connect, though. There we go. Okay. And we're going to drag it over here, and we're going to get it in front of the shop. Another mod that I recommend is Workshop Tabber. So this will grab the first thing and then not do anything else. I'm going to customize this tractor. We're going to go back to the normal wheels. There we go, standard tires. So it looks a little more manly while we're working with it. Since we're not doing crops, we'll put the care wheels back on when we need to do crops. Now we're going to bring this thing in front of the thing, and let's see if, it, if the thing finds the thing. So I'm going to go here and get on this. It did, okay. So we're going to customize this. I'm going to actually take it and make it. We have it here like this. Because we bought it with those, it comes with the sides. We're just going to do this. Now, you could do this, too. It makes it a little harder to get the logs in and out, but we'll try it. I may want to change it back. We'll see. So that cost us 2000 bucks to add that, to make it higher like that. But I think in the long run, it'll make our lives a little bit easier. So what do you want? Hermione, get out. So let's go ahead and drop that trailer here, and this will be interesting because we're on a pretty angled uh, field here. Now we still may need a log, like a log cutter, uh, or a, st a stump grinder. I'm not sure how that works, but so we're gonna lower the tree saw and we're gonna get it flat on the ground and then open. Let's see, how do we? 
Lift tree saw. Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, holding the right bumper down and left and right opens this thing. I'm not sure what exactly it does aside from maybe you can use it to push the tree down, but saw is running. I can't get this tree with it. So this one we're going to have to cut down manually. Manually. So we're definitely going to need it. Nope, it won't do it. Okay. Bummer. I've always wanted to try this thing out. I guess we get to do it. You get to see on my channel a complete fail. Um, and these trees don't really matter as much because they're on places that we can't really mow well anyway. Well, that was nice, but we're still going to have to grind the stump, so. Wolf. Wolf, wolf. And we'll do this one. Can we get those? Nope. So those are going to have to be done by hand. That's a pain. I might leave those on the edge because this grass part's what we really want to get at. Let's head over to the other side and see what else we can cut. Gonna have to do it the old fashioned way, I guess. Over on the other side, we should have more trees that are available to cut because they're, these are the more like pine tree style trees, Douglas firs and stuff like that. Yeah, these will all come down. It's over the, that big oak or whatever it is. But this saves us some time. 200 bucks, it's probably worth it. We're still going to have to grind the stumps, though. So, be $400 altogether. Uh oh. What the? There we go. Sometimes if you get stuck, detaching the uh, uh, piece of equipment will allow you to loosen it. As you saw there, I was able to just, like, knock that loose. <laughs> what a mess. So, that we've started cutting these trees down. We've got our other field planted. Uh, he's almost done planting the oats for the, our future horses. And you can see the lumber is not a science. I, I, I don't do lumber very often in there we go, Farm Sim 19 because I find that some of the stuff just doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And it gets aggravating after a while when things aren't working out. So... go and our, it looks like our guy is done working the uh, field so we'll check that out in just a second but we'll continue doing lumber in the next episode because uh, we've got a lot here some of these I'm just going to cut down because we want the money from them so uh, I'll show you how to sell all this we'll package it up put it in the trailer I have to make several trips and sell but potentially thirty, maybe forty thousand dollars for these trees. So it's worth it. But it is work. But it gives us something to do while the trees are or while the uh, crops are growing. Nice and easy. Just cut them all down like the Lorax. Or wait, did the Lorax do the cutting? No, he was the... I think he did the warning. Uh, are those on my property?
But we could take a thing and smooth all this out using our uh, land management tools and kind of make this a little bit more flat so that we can use it as a field for grass. There's that. Okay. I think that's good for now. I'm going to drop that off and we'll just dump it there and start chopping these up. So let's go ahead and put the seeding tractor away. I'll grab this guy. He's done. So we'll clean our equipment off and put it away. It should be fine for now. It, it will need repairing at some point, but right now we're not going to bother doing that. Uh, if you don't repair the equipment, it makes the tractor run slower. It doesn't really change the efficiency of the unit, but it does make everything run slower. So the paint also chips off, so it doesn't look quite as pretty. Cleaning your tractor does absolutely nothing, just so you have a heads up. It just makes it look pretty. So... I know I spent $5,000 on a washer. Maybe not the best idea, but it was nice to have one. So, All right, so that's it for that. We put that, we're going to put this away. So we've cut a bunch of trees down. And we're going to have to process those. I'm going to start processing them so you can see it before we end the episode. And then I'll cut them off. Um, yeah, cool. I'm sorry, off air. Pardon me. Goodness. So there's that. Let's go ahead and see what's going on with our tractor. Now, here's the thing. If you cut the logs small enough, you can actually pick them up by hand, which is why I currently don't have any log picking up tools because I feel like I'd rather just do it by hand. Sometimes it's easier faster it depends some days the physics are a little wonky on this game so so if i roll my mouse button or i'm not sure what it is on the controller sorry guys that one i don't know um we're gonna go back over here and look and see what we knocked down all this is gonna get knocked down too but i'm gonna start processing these so what you do is you find the stump of the tree that you knock down here's the stump right here and you just run up the stump and as you go, it eliminates branches. You see the branches disappearing. And this makes it easier to cut up. All right, then we're going to cut this into sections that we can pick up. So probably you can angle your, your saw, probably maybe this, this size about. I'm going to cut it here and see if I can pick that up. Can I lift this? I cannot. But maybe I'll use, I'm thinking maybe I just rent the forks. They actually have a fork that you can use to pick up logs. and that I want to keep them larger. The larger they are, the more money you get for them. So if you cut them too small, like you kind of cut back your profits. Maybe about here. Let's do that. And here. And probably one more good cut. I think that stuff to the left will disappear. It didn't. Look at that. All right. So this one we should be able to pick up because it's little. Yeah. There, helicopter. All right. So um, that gives us a pretty good gauge. I think we might have picked that up too. Let's see. About the size we want the logs to be. And once again, they do have all kinds of log processing equipment in the game. So these we can hand load. Maybe I will chop that. It seems like just that one is too big to pick up. So if that's the case, maybe I will just hand cut it. Look at that. Yeah. And then we just place these in the trailer and we take it to the lumber mill and sell it. This one's too big. So we're going to cut this in half. Look at that. Down one. And so all of this stuff gets loaded. I hate to touch it twice. I probably, in, you know, realistically you should grab 
the tractor you're doing it with, like this one, and get uh, the trailer and bring it over. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll show you. I'll load it into the trailer. And basically, you just fill the trailer up, take it to the lumber mill, fill it up, take it to the lumber mill, and just keep repeat, rinse, repeat. I don't know what I did with that cutter. It's up there in the grass somewhere, but we'll find it. Oops. Where did my tipper go? Oh, I left it up here. Okay. But lumber is, like I said, it's sort of profitable. It's not, like, super profitable, but it is a good way to make money. And if you want to clear trees on your land and use it for your land for other stuff, well, it's not a bad idea to clear that stuff off and make it available for your usage. Once again, we may want to plow that and actually plant grass. Reason being is because it makes it easier to mow if it's flat and easier to plant. Once you plant grass, though, you don't have to keep planting it. So unlike the other crops where you have to keep planting them, grass regrows, sugarcane regrows. Uh, I'm not sure if I think poplars regrow. Oh, I just ran my pile over. There's the pile. So we just grab these, pick it up. And I think I cut them trailer length, so they should fit right in. Yep, that looks good. Bloop. This looks good. So you get the idea. And we just do this till it's full and then take a load to the lumber mill and then come back and do it all, do it all over again. And that way we can sell all these and get some money and clear our field. So I'll go ahead and do some of this stuff off camera because there's obviously a lot that I need. I'm going to be clearing all these trees off and... I'll come back when it's time to make it pretty, but that shows you how easy it is to hand load those in there. There's all, I feel like I'm missing another short log. I ran all this stuff over, and in the process, I seem to have lost one of my big logs. Oh, well. Crap happens. We're going to have to come back and tree stump, too, this, the stumps. But you get the idea. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you're enjoying this series. I'm definitely having fun growing this farm. It is weird doing it with no mods and kind of doing it like the old-fashioned way, but it's it's fun. And once again, it just shows the game has a good foundation. It doesn't have to be, you know, like all modded out to actually work. But the mods do add a lot to it. I think they, they definitely extend the gameplay out, make some things easier, Just make, it, make us lazy farmers. All right, guys, have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help. I'll see you on the next episode of Future of Forestry. Have fun. Bye.